Today, we'll be walking you through some actions that you can take to curtail the effects of global weirding. We must change our behavior so future generations do not inherit a destroyed planet. One of the ways this is possible is by replacing fossil fuels with renewable resources. Renewable or green sources of energy include nuclear fission and fusion, solar, hydroelectric, geothermal, and wind power. Each of these is an alternative source of energy that produces energy without producing large amounts of greenhouse gases. Many of these alternative sources of energy are currently being implemented by countries such as the United States and others like nuclear fission and fusion are currently not feasible. Now we will show you those renewable resources in action. We now know that renewable resources can provide the same amount of energy as oil and natural gas, while simultaneously reducing costs and carbon dioxide emissions. Some of these energy forms include hydroelectric, geothermal, wind power, nuclear fusion and fission, and solar power. Compared to other resources, water generates the most electricity. You might wonder why water is considered more accessible than sources like the sun and the wind, but we must take into account the fact that the sun is only present throughout the day and the wind is not always readily available. But over 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with water, making water or hydroelectric power one of the most reliable and easily accessible sources of energy. Moving water can generate a lot of energy, whether it is from a swift flowing lake or rapidly descending waterfall. Turbines are placed directly in the water source and energy is generated as the water pushes the blades of the turbine, causing a spinning motion. The two types of systems that can be employed to generate electricity from water include the run of the river system and a storage system. The latter is used to store water created by dams that is released only when it is needed. The run of the river system, on the other hand, is put into use when a certain amount of pressure must be applied on the turbines at a particular time through the force of a current. Water used in the hydroelectric power system is renewable because it gets recycled through the water cycle, during which the water evaporates after being heated by the sun and the vapors condense into clouds and precipitate back onto the surface only to evaporate again. We can also utilize the heat from below the Earth's crust to produce affordable and clean geothermal energy. The heat is produced from decaying radioactive materials below the Earth's crust in a molten rock layer called magma. The highest of temperatures obtained from this layer can be found in areas containing volcanoes and those with earthquakes and natural hot springs and geysers. Geothermal power plants work by capturing steam from heated water that is driven to the surface when cool water is heated up as it moves into the Earth's crust. Dry steam, flash steam, and binary cycle are three ways of capturing the steam. In the dry steam design, the steam is condensed into water after moving through a turbine. Hot water is depressurized into steam for driving turbines in the flash steam system. And in binary cycle, it heats another liquid which boils at a lower temperature and therefore easily converts into steam. Advantages of geothermal energy include the production of continuous energy and the presence of about 50,000 times more energy than all the oil and natural gas resources in the world contained in heat, located within only 33,000 feet of the Earth's surface. Another type of power generating plant is a wind turbine. These large machines convert the kinetic energy in wind, which rotates the turbine's blade, to mechanical energy. A generator will be used to convert this mechanical energy into electricity, or the mechanical energy can be used by itself for tasks such as water pumping. More power is generated with higher wind speed, because twice the wind speed will produce up to eight times more power. There are several advantages to switching over to wind energy, including a decrease in natural gas prices, greenhouse gas emissions, and water consumption. Rural areas can experience economic growth by building wind turbines because most power can be developed in open areas, such as farms, which will have abundant wind. 
This is also a disadvantage of wind power, because in order to get this power from rural areas to urban areas, transmission lines must be invested in. Wind technology is not the cheapest to invest in, especially compared to fossil fuels and natural gas, which do not require as many costs. Solar energy is the sun's rays or solar radiation that reach the earth. This energy can be converted into other forms of energy such as heat and electricity. When converted to thermal energy, solar energy can be used to heat water in places like homes, buildings, or swimming pools. It can also be used to heat spaces inside homes, not just simply water. Solar energy can be converted to electricity in two ways, photovoltaic cells and by concentrating solar power plants. Photovoltaic cells convert sunlight directly to electricity. Individual photovoltaic cells are grouped into panels and arrays of panels. That can be used in a wide spectrum of applications ranging from single cells that can charge calculators and watch batteries to systems that power single homes to large power plants across many acres. By concentrating solar power plants in one area, electricity is generated by using the heat from solar thermal collectors to heat a fluid that produces steam. That steam is later used to power the generator. Even though solar energy seems efficient and beneficial to its full extent, there are a, are a few drawbacks. The first is that the amount of sunlight that arrives at the Earth's surface is not constant. It is true that solar energy is by far the Earth's most available energy source and that it is capable of providing many times the total current energy demand. However, it is not available throughout the day. The amount received depends on location, time of the day, time of the year, and other weather conditions. Another drawback is the amount of sunlight received in one place at any one time. A large surface area is required to collect the energy in a useful rate. Remote locations are needed for sufficient collection of solar power, which are rare. Even if remote areas were easily located, then transferring and allocating the energy would be costly and inefficient in the long run. Energy from nuclear fusion will be an important source because the prospect of successful nuclear fusion technology promises virtually unlimited energy with very little danger. Furthermore, the radiation from a magnetic containment device is easily shielded, and if there is an accident, the reaction immediately stops. Nuclear fission is when one atom is split into two. Here, high-energy neutrons split heavy atoms of uranium. Its atoms are constantly falling apart, breaking up into smaller elements that are, most, that are more stable. Every time one nucleus does this, it releases the extra energy it no longer needs to hold it together, as well as a few leftover neutrons. This energy and the escaping neutrons is what we describe as the radiation being emitted from the radioactive element. This energy and flow of escaping neutrons can damage human cells, so radioactivity is dangerous. This process results in release of huge amount of energy. However, this also releases large radioactive waste and high radio radiation waves, which remain for a long period. There are many different kinds of nuclear power plants. A nuclear power plant harnesses the energy inside atoms themselves and converts this to electricity. This electricity is used by all of us. A nuclear power plant used, uses controlled nuclear fission. A nuclear power, power plant produces electricity in almost exactly the same way that a conventional power plant does. A conventional power plant burns fuels to create heat. The fuel is generally coal, but oil is also sometimes used. The heat is used to raise the temperature of water, thus causing it to boil. The high temperature and intense pressure steam that result from the boiling of the water turns a turbine, which then generates electricity. A nuclear power plant works the same way, except that the heat used to boil the water is produced by a nuclear fission reaction using 235U as fuel, not the combustion of fossil fuels. So, if alternative sources of energy are available, why aren't they widely used? Well, first of all, we are reliant on coal and oil, which are efficient at producing energy. Most renewable resources aren't as efficient and are more expensive. So basically, by using alternative sources of energy, we're paying more for less.